Hello and welcome to This Is Your Life. Excuse the costume, but we're at the Move Summit, a festival of animated film, and we're looking for one of their guest speakers on virtual reality, Hugh Hancock, the founder of Machinima Animation. Okay, let's go and see if we can get him. Here he comes now. Ah, hello, Hugh. I wonder if I could grab a few moments of your time to answer a couple of questions for our viewers. That's a great costume. Sure, I can give you a few minutes, of course. Well, Hugh, I am going to ask you for a bit more than a few minutes when I say to you, Hugh Hancock, inventor of machinima, founder of Strange and the guru of animation and virtual reality, tonight... Hugh Hancock, known online as Caramen, this is your life. You are joking. You're not joking. Okay, let's go for it. Thanks, Hugh. Let's make our way to the studio set and we'll meet up with a few friends. Leave the costume on, it kind of suits you. Well, Hugh, all a bit of a surprise, I know, but uh, welcome to This Is Your Life, which for you started on the 30th of August, 1977, in Bristol. Yep. A lot's happened since then. School, usual teen stuff, although I was always a bit of a geek with computer games and the like, before things really got serious when I moved up to Edinburgh to go to uni, studying computing, of course. And you got a bit sidetracked, I understand. He certainly did. He dropped out of uni to spend a lot more time in my cafe. You've not seen that cafe owner for some time. Please welcome Paul Younger. So, tell us about the cafe, Paul. Way back in 1977, I owned Reality X Cafe. Maybe the first ever video game cafe. And you spent a lot of time in there. In fact... He had given up uni after a year largely because of his interest in what he would eventually call machinima. When he approached me to talk about creating a movie using a quake engine. There were quite a few of us already hacking the graphic software in Quake and Doom and experimenting with the characters. Paul had 20 PCs on a network, but even though he thought we were mad, he agreed to let us use them. You see, Hugh was essentially a storyteller, but the written word wasn't enough for him, so he developed this underground kind of filmmaking. Over the following weeks, Hugh and his team filmed the first movie, Eschaton. It was a marvel that we pulled it off as computer graphics were at a very early stage, but we managed to push the boundaries thanks to Paul's help. Aye, we were eager to help, even though Hugh often moaned at us for throwing hand grenades on screen whilst he was trying to build the set. It was quite funny. They certainly were mad times. Well, thank you, Paul. I'm sure you two will have lots to chat about later. Paul Younger, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> The Reality X Video Cafe was where it all started then, Hugh. Yes, it was, and I suppose a time when I began to think of the film industry as two different entities. The studio film industry, with its mass appeal and seemingly unlimited budgets, and a stranglehold on cinema release, and indie film. Independent filmmakers producing niche market films on very tight budgets, 
and almost completely unknown outside of its small target audience. So what did you do about that? Aye, what he did was very strange indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the co-founder of the Strange Company, Mr. Gordon MacDonald. <laughs> So, oh, Hugh and Hugh founded The Strange Company in May 1999. That must have been an exciting time. Tell us about that, Gordon. I was a soundscape artist working in Edinburgh, and I met Hugh through GS, a university role-playing society. Hugh was a part-time journalist by then, spending a lot of time in Reality X working on what came to be known as machinima films. He spent all his time there. Yes, Working on films at the cafe, and in particular the second part of our Eschaton series, I decided that machinima was so significant it warranted my full-time attention, as the technology now allowed me to tell the kind of stories I've been wanting to tell without spending millions of pounds. I was very enthused by machinima, and the strange company worked on several projects, and eventually released numerous independent films. We did commercials for BBC and Electronic Arts. Oh, a whole load of stuff. Yeah, my projects do tend to spiral. Aye, well, we maybe spent too much time on the Lithtech film project. It was a feature-length machinima film, which, sadly, we eventually shelved it in 2001. Start the hub around that time, too. Aye, in 2000 we found an online hub, machinima.com. YouTube wasn't around then, and our hub was a reliable way for a new generation of enthusiastic animators to share their work and views. It started off as a very small idea, but boy, it grew and grew. How it grew! It certainly did. As some time later, you sold the company for a five-figure sum, and it reached millions of views per month when the new owners sold to Warner Brothers. And the company was valued then at nearly a hundred million dollars. Now that is real growth. Hugh progressed in so many fields, mentoring people who learned from him. He was a great friend to me in Edinburgh, and had a massive influence on my video game career. I'm still at it after 20 years. Hugh always had time for people, and I tell you, that's rare in this industry. Certainly a lot of people were inspired by his enthusiasm. Hugh was amazing, and produced one of the most immersive gaming experiences, left-hand path, that people of that persuasion had ever come across. Gordon, thank you for your insight into Strange. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gordon MacDonald. <laughs> I saw the first machinima film, or Quake movies as they were then known, and that inspired me to, to help and create, and I ended up directing. Ten years on, 2007, I wrote a book with Johnny Ingram, a fellow Strange member called Machinima for Dummies, made the feature film, Bloodspell, travelled all over the world as a result of the decision to go full-time machinima. It's been really good to me. There seem to have been several turning points in your life, Hugh. Yes, there were, and few less so than in April 2016, when I had an encounter with a Vive room-scale virtual reality headset. It led me to a whole new ball game, and I started to bring two decades of storytelling and design experience to room-scale virtual reality. They were exciting times. I know you are keen on uh, virtual reality, Hugh, but I know our viewers would like to know a little bit more about strange films, and in particular, Death Knight Love Story. How on earth did you manage to land Joanna Lumley, Brian Blessed, Anna Chancellor, and Jack Davenport in that early machinima film? That was an amazing feat, wasn't it? I asked him the same question, and he said, Believe it or not, we just asked. 
Let's give a warm welcome to video gamer and journalist Andrew Girdwood. <laughs> Andrew, you were fascinated by Machinima, and you interviewed Hugh for Geek Nation. Yes, it was in 2014, and Geek Nation was a hobby blog for me then, and my viewers were intrigued by the Death Knight love story, which, although it was a boy meets girl, shared love of honour, violence and swordplay that you see in video games, both characters were killed off early in the film before being resurrected by magic, by Artas. He was played by Brian Blessed. It was a zany plot, but I chanced my arm and I rang Gail Stevens, who casted Slumdog Millionaire, and she was fascinated by the motion picture and a video game idea, so she agreed to come on board with the casting. A major breakthrough. And that seemed to be the story the whole way through. I'm a video game geek myself, and we tend to forget just how futuristic the things we are involved with are. Death Knight Love Story had a runtime of 20 minutes on a budget around $30,000, but had a huge impact in our field, as did a number of strange productions. And a diverse lot they were too. Eschaton, a feature movie, and When We Parted, an adaptation of a Lord Byron poem. Certainly very different. Actually, that was on the front page of YouTube when it was released. There was even a kamikaze cookery which was like uh, Top Gear meets Mythbusters meets a cooking show, and eventually Left Hand Path. That was a giant leap into virtual reality. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> so, Hugh, virtual reality, what's that all about? A new venture for you? Yes, it was. Machinima was incredible for me. And I was able to push the boundaries for a long, long time. But there came a time when I thought I'd pushed as far as it would go. I had opportunities to talk about machinima all over the world. But to be fair, the films took an absolute age to make. So VR was perhaps inevitable for me. So that... Damascus Road moment with the Vive headset led to early projects like Eye of the Tower. Is that right? Yes, that was a start, I guess. I produced that and presented it at the Oculus Rift Game Jam. I wanted to use the Rift to best effect, and my thinking was, if you use the Rift, you're basically a floating eye in space. So what character is just a floating eye? So Eye of the Tower was born. So, a giant eye defending itself from hordes of invading enemies with eye beams of death. Is that right, Hugh? Yes, wholesome family fun. It was the first time I developed a computer game, and a fascinating experience. Unfortunately, it didn't make the finalists, but had very good feedback, so I was happy with it. And then came Left Hand Path. Yeah, I played around with a few projects, but... Left Hand Path was a cracker. Basically, you hold the power of magic in your hands, learn arcane gestures to cast powerful spells, fight fearsome foes and find your way through a magical landscape. It was great virtual reality stuff. It was an experience, all right, and not for the faint-hearted. Now please welcome popular culture expert and journalist, Lily Ruppert. <laughs> Not for the faint-hearted, then, Lily. It certainly wasn't a sit-on-your-seat virtual reality experience. You were active and totally immersed. You have to be fit to play it. Well, not Olympic standard, to be fair, but, yeah. You gesture to cast spells, you squat to wield the massive axe, you dodge arrows as they whiz by, and you duck into secret passages, and, yeah, I guess you have to be fit. One of the reviewers on Steam said, It's the first game I've lost myself and ended up running into my couch, attempting a ritual. I believe that Hugh does tell a good story, though, Lily. 
Once he realized the scope that virtual reality had to offer, he then brought his creative narrative to the completely immersive world that VR brings to the gaming market. The move to VR was a huge career shift for Hugh, but one that brought innovation to a very tough market. Hugh brought us a real experience machine and not an empathy tool. That's very important. I thought long and hard about the characterization in Left Hand Path. I wanted people to experience their world, but not to engage with their emotions. I mean, most of the time they're trying to kill people or avoid being killed. It's a virtual reality experience, not a real world with real genuine emotions. <laughs> It's meant to be fun. I think you make a lot of people have a lot of fun, Hugh. Ladies and gentlemen. Lily Ruppert. At the end of the day, although I love the technology and I love doing what I do, I'm in the entertainment industry and that is meant to be a lot of fun for people, isn't it? He made fun of me on many occasions, but I love him to bits. Now please welcome a great friend of Hughes, Charles Nagol. <laughs> So, Charles, you were the target of fun for Hugh sometimes. Yeah, it was. I shared a platform with Hugh at many an affiliate STM conference and really enjoyed his company. He was known as Caraman online and a great moderator at STM, acting as MC at several conferences and always went the extra mile to make people laugh. Would you tell us about one of those times then, Charles? When he was MC at an event, he would spend time beforehand asking about recent experiences, and my face turned very red when he introduced me as the guy rooming with an 85-year-old lady in London. <laughs> That was bad. I had to explain it was an Airbnb era. It was very embarrassing. But the STM affiliates was only a small part of his life. He was the machinima innovator. A virtual reality giant. A real pioneer spirit. Fantastic. Thank you, Charles. Charles Nagol. Well, I think that says it all, Hugh. An incredible journey. From university computer course to machinima creator, author, a virtual reality pioneer, an inspiration to many. Hugh Hancock, this is your life. <laughs>